Hi guys, this is Greg Benz with another Photoshop tutorial. In this demonstration, I'll show you how to use the path blur filter in Photoshop in order to add energy and really breathe life into a photograph by taking a static element like these escalator steps and put them in motion. Now this is a complex edit overall. I'm not going to show you anything other than the path blur piece of this. However, I will show you the layers I use to give you a sense. And if you want to learn more about the various other tools I use here, be sure to check out my newsletter at gregbenzphotography.com newsletter, as well as subscribe to my YouTube channel to see other videos where, where I will show these other techniques. So I have this original exposure here that I started with and it has a, a few issues I've already addressed. First, the top of this globe is massively overexposed. So I took a darker exposure and simply blended that in using luminosity masks. Next, there's this red streak of light coming out the side that I don't mind, it's just too powerful. So I wanted to diminish it and use another exposure and luminosity mask to help bring that down. Next, there's this part of the wall here that seems to have some sort of uh, paint or something has rubbed off on it. So I wanted to clone that out. And then these escalator steps, even though they're a key leading line for me. They're a little bit too overpowering and there's not enough of the warm yellow in them. So I brought them down using a curve adjustment and a luminosity mask to help set the mood a little bit better for the image. And then lastly, the foreground shadows here that should be really dark, at kind of coming out of the universe, they're too bright. They make the image a little bit kind of blah and I wanted to add more depth and dimension by darkening them. So I used a luminosity mask again there to bring that down. So those are all the background steps I've already taken for this image. Let's go ahead and create a clone stamp by holding Shift Option Command E or Shift Alt Control E on a PC. And this is our copy where we can begin the blurring process. So I'm just gonna take this background stuff and just hide it in a group. And I'm gonna show you first what happens if you use motion blur and why this tool is not really appropriate for this particular image. So if we go to filter, blur, motion blur, come up with the motion blur tool. It's already set vertically. So the motion is going in the correct direction for the escalator steps. And things look pretty interesting. I, I like how the stairs look, but if we look at the handrail, it really looks terrible. It's just not sharp. And what's happened is this hand railing is not moving up and down. The stairs are in the center but the hand railing is kind of coming up and left through the image at a couple different angles. And even these stairs here are starting to blur in a way that's not realistic because motion blur is just simply pushing everything in one direction. So I'm gonna say, okay, we'll just keep this for reference, but it's really not what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead, create another stamp of my original background here, call this one path blur. Let's move it up top and we'll work on this to create our blur. So to do this, first thing we wanna do is turn it into a smart object or convert to smart filter. So filter, convert for smart filters. And the reason we do this is everything we do with the path blur filter becomes editable later, which will be important for a couple of reasons in this demo. But in general, something I like to do because you never know when you work with a more complex tool like the path blur filter and wanna go back and make a change. So to get to it, we now go filter, blur gallery, path blur. And if you're wondering why my menus look kind of funny like this, I have custom menu set up, which if you subscribe to my newsletter, you'll get those as well. Just a quick way that I help find menu items, but everything here is in the, the standard place. So just filter, blur gallery, path blur. And when we open this up, we'll see that there's a default blur already applied to the image. And the general idea is that you create these arrows on the image and that determines where the blur is gonna be. So in this case, it's moving to the right, so everything's blurring to the right. If we simply redraw the arrow to go vertical, then we pretty much have what we did a minute ago with motion blur. Everything is just moving in one straight direction. But we wanna do something a little bit fancier. We wanna create motion in many directions. So we want to have motion follow along these various lines on the escalator and that's going to give us a nice realistic blur. So I'm simply going to drag this arrow to one of these key lines here. So now my motion on this edge is going in the right direction and the first thing you'll notice is this side of the blur looks right. It's not blurring. These lines are now 
holding where they should be because everything's moving in one direction. But of course, the other parts of the image don't look good. This railing still looks terrible. This side here, the stairs are still blurring in with everything else. So what we need to do is add some additional arrows to define multiple directions. And you can do that by just cl clicking somewhere else in the image and drag out, and that's gonna give you a straight line. And now we have created a second line. So now we see that this part near the escalator also looks really good. So the, the escalator, everything in between looks great, but these handrails still aren't quite the way that they should be. And that's okay, we can draw yet more arrows there and we can get a little bit fancier. So I'm gonna drag this up and obviously the motion's not moving in a straight line here, it's going along this railing and up. Well, we can just simply hover over this line and anywhere you get this little arrow with a plus, we can click and drag to create a curve. So I'm gonna try and create something that everything kind of moves right up the center of this railing and Photoshop connected these dots in a way that's not quite right. It's not staying along this railing. That's okay. We can simply go over to the blue, click and drag and add more points to get the curve we want. So I'm just trying to get this to go right along this railing here. Now it is a little bit wavy. I wanna try and avoid that, but generally speaking, I'm not too worried about getting this perfect because once it's close, it's already got something that looks really nice. Now, if we look at this railing here, there's a nice sh sharp separation between the handrail and the background. So it is doing what we want. And compare that to the other side here where things are just very, very blurry because we haven't done the same yet. So let's go ahead and do the same thing on the right. I'm gonna click and drag to create the line. I'm gonna click and drag from the line to start to shape it. And we're just gonna go and add a couple more points here until we get something like this. So we're following along that railing pretty nicely. I'm just gonna make a few little tweaks and you know, if I was doing this on my own, I might spend a little bit more time to get it slightly more perfect. But honestly, this is really uh, pretty darn good. You really don't have to get much better than this. It's gonna give us a nice blur. So we have all the motion in the right directions now, but there are some additional options within this tool that we can play with in order to really fine tune things and they all appear over here on the right. The first is an option to choose a rear sync flash look. We're not gonna use that. It just simply gives a little bit of a frozen motion, which, you know, maybe your thing. Uh, I'm not gonna use it here. Uh, next up, there's three options that are global. There is speed. That's gonna change the overall amount of blur in the image proportional to whatever you've done. So everything here really starts to go pretty extreme. So we'll leave it at lower levels here around 50%. Taper is just determining how quickly the effect changes from one part of the image to another. I typically add just a little bit of taper. It's kind of a complex feature and you just have to play with it in order to see if things look the way you want for a given blur. Next is centered blur and centered basically means stay put. When I uncheck this, you'll see everything kind of pushes up and is no longer aligned with the original parts of the image. And that's a problem because when we want to finish this, we're going to take the blur and mask it into the unblurred image and we need it to be aligned. So we do want to leave centered on. Lastly, you'll see this endpoint speed and endpoints are these little dots. And if we click on one, we'll see that it's now editable. And this is basically saying at this point on this line, how much of this stuff be blurred? So we can essentially make one end of the line have a different value than the other end of the line. We just click and see here, there's another value. Well, you can drag this slider if you want, and that will adjust essentially the overall speed. Or what I like to do is hover near it, and you'll see this little interactive circle appear. Just click and drag on the white part and bring it back. And so now you can see we're at kind of a little bit less than one quarter speed here. And I'm gonna do the same thing with these other endpoints. I'm gonna take them. Again, don't hover over the dot, just near it. Otherwise, you won't be able to adjust it. Then just click and drag this. And we're going to do that to each of these endpoints here. And what you can see is as I'm doing this, the amount of blur that occurs at the top of the photograph is less than at the bottom. And that's exactly what we want because in reality, the amount of motion farther from the camera doesn't look as great as the motion close to the camera. So now we have a really good looking blur. Everything's kind of coming up along the right lines. It's a little bit faster in the foreground and then in the background. And 
we could accept this and just start to blend it in. But I'm gonna point out a couple of shortcomings here that we'll deal with in a minute. One, there are some areas that have blended together. This edge here we can see is kind of blurred. And this is a solid object that isn't in motion moving into the reflection of the moving stairs. And that's gonna be kind of an issue. The way we're gonna fix that in a minute is to essentially clone this area out so that the blur is occurring on things that look just like this. Next, there were some lines in the plexiglass here originally, and I can turn off my preview so we can see here the plexiglass behind. Now, you may decide that you uh, do or do not want to fix that. Sometimes you're going to want to fix that because it's going to cause artifacts in the blur. Sometimes you may want to fix it because it's something that the viewer would expect. These little seams in the plexiglass, if they blur out here, it's not really a big deal. The viewer is not going to think about that. They're not expecting that to occur. But I do see a little bit of a ghosting here from the plexiglass where it's thicker. So to me, I do want to fix that. So we'll get that in a minute. So I'm going to say OK. And this is going to apply our path blur. And we're going to go back and edit the smart object in a minute so we can go ahead and clone out those areas to fix them up. OK, so we've applied the blur gallery. The path blur is part of the blur gallery to our smart object. So this is completely editable. And like I said, we're gonna go back in here and we're gonna fix up some of these little artifacts in a minute. But first I wanna go ahead and mask this in so we can see what the total effect looks like because that is a helpful way to determine how much you need to go and really kind of fine tune this. There's, there's no point in going back and fixing every little blemish here if some of them just don't appear in the image. Now I'm not gonna show you the entire masking process. It's a little too lengthy, but I'll just show you kind of the basic concept. So I'm gonna alt click on a mask so we have a black mask, so now our blurred smart object is hidden and we're just seeing the original underneath. All we need to do now is load up a paintbrush with white paint. And I'm gonna take up my flow a little bit here. I tend to like working with a soft edge brush and kind of a moderate amount of flow. And you can just simply start to paint in now I'm using a Wacom tablet. If you don't have one of these, highly recommend it. Very, very controlled way to edit. So we can see that this is looking pretty decent here. And we've got the reflections as well to deal with. And that's what makes this a pretty complex edit. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of manually blur them in a bit just to get a feel for what things look like here. As well as this railing should be kind of blurred. Now, you could get away with not doing a lot of it, but there are some areas that upon closer inspection you're gonna see that there's kind of this blotchy look to it. And as we bring in the blurred look, they look much more like a moving object would. So it is important to get those little details, even though I'm not gonna do all of them in the video here. So I think that gives you kind of a general idea of what we wanna to fix here uh, in terms of the masking process. I'm gonna pause for a moment to just go ahead and finish the mask and come back in a second. Okay, so as I said, I've added a mask now to my path blur object. And you can see here's the mask, and it's pretty complicated, but essentially the idea is that I'm just blurring in the areas where I want to see the motion. So you can see obviously the escalator, the handrails, the reflection of the escalator are all in, but I've taken out the metal strips that are of course static, as well as these little bristle hairs on the edge of the escalator. Those aren't in motion really either these little foreground parts of the metal. I didn't have to do all of it. Once you get far enough back, it really doesn't make a difference. But in the closer up detail, I wanted to get that. And then where I spent the most time probably is really just these little strings here of the plexiglass, cutting those out so that the plexiglass would show through. Not necessary, as I mentioned, but I kind of like the effect. So I left them in. So with that on, we can see now here is the effect with everything kind of blurred together. So uh, turning the blur on, versus the original and we can see that the plexiglass is showing through in the key areas that I masked. So just little bits of that detail showing through here versus if I turn that mask off, you can see here's the original blur if I put it everywhere and just that little bit of depth and dimension that I think adds something to the image. Now, one last bit, as I mentioned before, we have this artifact here where this original piece here is being blurred in and we don't want to show the blur there. So the way we're going to fix that is to jump back into the smart object and do a little bit of cloning. So we'll do that last step to finish up. 
Okay, so we're back inside of our smart object and we just need to clean a few things up. As I mentioned, there's some stuff in the original image that's getting blurred in that shouldn't be. Specifically, these seams of the plexiglass as well as this metal here. We don't want these to be blurred into the escalator steps. We just want to have the escalator itself be blurred. In order to fix that, we're going to use content aware to knock this stuff out. So I'm going to load up the magic wand with the W key, select this area and hit shift delete in order to bring up content aware fill. So it's on content aware, just hit OK and Photoshop will automatically fix this area for me. Now it does not look very nice, um, but that is fine. In fact, there's a little bit of a seam here. Let's go back couple steps and I'm going to actually expand this so I'll go to select modify expand we will just add two pixels to it and that's going to give us just enough room so that when we hit shift delete and content aware fill it should do a better job so that's one quick example and I could go even further but it's good enough the point here is we want to get things inside this area to look like this so that when they get blurred together everything looks like a moving stair the fact that this looks kind of weird over here uh, that we ate into the railing. None of that matters because we're not going to use that portion of it. We just want to make sure that this part inside here looks good. So just get it good enough and call it a day. It does not have to be perfect. Next, I'm going to use the healing tool and I'm just going to pick a source and start to draw with the healing tool. And you can see this is the sort of thing I can just quickly fix this. And again, does not have to be perfect. Just going to simply get it good enough because it's going to get blurred and it's really not going to matter that it's some beautiful work of art. It just has to be close enough. And that I think is going to be good enough, uh, quite honestly. So I'm going to finish that up. Okay, so here I've uh, created a copy and finished all the cloning. So you can see this is where we kind of left things off. And then here I've just gotten rid of these plexiglass lines and more of this detail here in the foreground. And again, it's not a pretty job. In fact, it's pretty rough, but it's good enough for what we need. So we're just going to simply close out this smart object, save it to go back to the original where I'll show you the finished image. And so here is our finished image all brought together. Looks really nice in comparison. Here's where we started before with no motion. This is just the work that we had done with luminosity masking and then added the motion to the escalator stairs here. Looks really nice and natural. Now for comparison's sake, I took the motion blur layer we had before. I added the exact same layer mask to it. And I'll just show you the difference. Here's path blur. And then here's what we would have had had we just used motion blur. Obviously it looks pretty unrealistic overall. Uh, and that is why we use path blur because we can define the direction of motion to get a very natural looking finished result. So just to kind of recap the steps we took, we started with the original set of layers. We duplicated it and made it into a smart object so we could apply the path blur filter to it. We then went into path blur and added multiple different lines to define the various angles and direction of motion to make sure everything looked nice and natural and tweaked the settings to get the sort of speed we wanted within that. Then we added a layer mask so that the blur was only applied to the things that are moving in the image. And then lastly, as a finishing touch, went into that smart object and just cloned out some things that were accidentally getting blurred and causing a little bit of artifact just to clean things up. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to see more, again, please subscribe to my YouTube channel as well as my free newsletter available via gregbensphotography.com newsletter. Thanks.